Oh, bless that wonderful name. Oh, bless that wonderful name. Oh, bless that wonderful name. praise for another Sunday morning in the house of the Lord. We invite uh, those of you who are watching us by way of a digital device to come and be in service with us here uh, at the Emmanuel Temple Church, 128 East Adams Street, here in the heart of Sandusky, Ohio, where we are praising and magnifying the name of the Lord. His name is worthy to be praised today, and we thank God for all that he has done and all that the Lord is going to do. For a few moments here uh, today, I'd like to uh, invite you to join with me uh, in the book of St. Mark, chapter number 16. And I want to share with you today a word from the Lord. Uh, St. Mark, chapter number 16. And um, we begin reading at uh, verse number one and just a few uh, verses here in your hearing and then we'll move on today in the house of the Lord. St. Mark chapter number 16 and I'm going to start reading at verse number one here regarding the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the Lord and the aftermath of what happened after his resurrection. Please join me in St. Mark chapter number 16 and verse number one and the Bible and the word of the Lord reads like this. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Solomon, Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning of the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll away the stone for us from the door of the sepulcher? Now the words was big and heavy. They were concerned how a couple of women were going to roll away a heavy stone. Verse 4, 
And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right hand, on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were amazed, shocked, surprised. They were astonished. Verse 6, and he said unto them, be not amazed. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, and as he said unto you. Verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them, shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The people of God said amen. This morning, for a few moments in your, your hearing, I feel led of the Lord to share with you uh, a thought coming out of verse number seven, where the encounter has occurred, where, where the two sisters went and to try to bring some anointment, some ointment to try to soothe the smell that might have occurred from a body that had been laying there for a long time, for a few days. And in verse number seven, uh, the writer says that the angel that was sitting inside of the sepulcher told them that I understand that you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Bible says, behold, he is not here. He was crucified, but he has risen. And then in verse 7, where I want to draw my thought uh, today uh, with the help of the Lord, uh, where the writer says that now that he's not here, I need you to go and tell Peter and the rest of the disciples that uh, he's risen and that he's going to come before them in Galilee. Using for a subject today, very briefly in your hearing, meet me in Galilee. Meet me in Galilee. This morning, this scripture always blesses me and empowers me when I think about the miraculous nature of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When I think about how it might have occurred in that time when nothing of this nature, nothing of this magnitude had ever occurred before. And so there is a process in place where the Lord had already laid out ahead of time exactly what was going to happen. And I want to speak today a little bit about the nature of the promises of God. When God has made a promise when God has declared that a certain thing is supposed to happen, uh, I'm a witness to know that it may not come when you want it to. But I'm a witness to know that God is always on time. 
and that if it has been declared, it is indeed going to happen. I'm empowered today, I'm strengthened today to know that we all have to find a place where we can be endued with power from on high. We all have to find that spiritual location, that spiritual condition, that spiritual environment that will allow the Lord to allow the promise to become a reality. We have to use good insight. We have to be able to understand that when the Lord is directing our life, we may not at times be in charge of the direction that God is moving us in. A man, sometime I've heard a, a preacher say that if you want to see God laugh, tell him what your plans are. In other words, tell him what you kind of think you've got figured out because each of us has a destination in God. Each of us has a place where God is moving us and guiding us and directing us. And those of you who are listening again by way of a digital device, I need to let you know that your life too has a destination. And the things that you've been struggling with, the things that you've been trying to manage on your own, I'm here to tell you that it's time to put those concerns in the hands of the Lord. It's time to put those concerns in the hand of the Lord who knows all things, who's able to help us and able to deliver us. And so, I'm encouraged today to know that if we understand how the true power of God works, if we understand the true magnitude of who God is, then we can determine that my job is to put myself in a position to be blessed. My job is to try to figure out where can I go but to the Lord. How can I position myself for a blessing from the Lord? Today, I want you to imagine that Galilee, of course, is a city, but I want you to think about Galilee today more uh, as opposed to a geographical location, but more about a spiritual destination on your spiritual journey. I want you to imagine that Galilee is not necessarily a place where there's a marketplace and where all kinds of interesting things are happening in the city of Galilee, but uh, I want you to think about Galilee as a spiritual destination after you have had a spiritual resurrection, after you have spent a little time trying to understand where the Lord wants you to go. After you spent a little time going through some of the challenges of our days, that there is a destination that we need to go through and that we all need some form of a spiritual resurrection. All of us at one time we had to make up our mind to figure out were we going to be saved or not? Were we going to accept the Lord as our personal savior? Were we going to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins? And were we going to start on a spiritual journey required us to basically be able to redirect our life? A kind of a spiritual resurrection, if you please, where we needed to give way to some of the things we used to do and be resurrected into a brand new spiritual life. To be resurrected in a way that says, my mind is made up. My heart is fixed. I'm going to select Jesus as my savior. Tried everything and everything has failed now I'm going to take time and give the Lord a chance. And so when we determine in our hearts and in our minds that the Lord is the destination that we're looking for, 
It now allows us to have our own resurrection. It allows us to be able to say, I need to go where the spirit of the Lord is. I need to be able to say that wherever the Lord directs my life, wherever the Lord is leading me, wherever the Lord is telling me to go, I want to be in the wheel of the Lord. I want to be in a position where I can be resurrected on my spiritual journey. I want to be in a position where I can be in the will of God and do the Lord's will. It's important today to understand that the resurrection is significant on in our spiritual understanding because it validates exactly who God is. The resurrection validates the fact that the Lord said that I am going to live among you. I'm going to walk among you for over 30 years and there's going to come a time when they're going to kill me. And I have to understand the Lord understood that this was part of the predestination process by which we all now have a right to the tree of life. Had not the Lord died on the cross, had not the Lord gotten up on the third day, those of us today, we would not have the opportunity that we have today to be able to know the Lord in the fullness of his power. And so I'm encouraged today because uh, we all have to have some form of resurrection. It's important to know that uh, when we think about the Lord and we think about Jesus himself, the Lord makes it very clear that when he was dying as the son of God, that Jesus essentially was the reincarnation of God himself. In other words, God and Jesus are one. I hear the writer saying that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. In other words, God started out being God, decided that he had to come in the form of a man to be able to share the message of good tidings to the people. And what I love about the Lord is that he certainly could have determined that he did not want to go through the process he went through in order to die on the cross. You know the story where the Lord is on the cross and they made a mockery of the Lord and they pierced him in the side. And they place a thorn, a crown of thorns on his head. And at any time, our Lord had the power to say, hold on now. Uh, I changed my mind. I, I decided that I don't want to go through this. Uh, I decided that this is not something that I want to do. But I'm so glad that the Lord decided that in order for us to have a right to the tree of life, in order for us to understand the true power and the magnitude of the power of the Holy Ghost, that the Lord had to go through this process. The Lord had to go through uh, the process where he had to carry a heavy cross on his shoulder. Amen. And they had to go through the process where uh, he was going up the hill with a heavy cross on his back where people were making fun of him and exaggerating and they said, well, uh, you say that you are uh, a great God. You say that you are a man, the son of God. You say that you can do anything, uh, but here you are struggling up the hill with a cross on your back. Made me think about the people of God sometimes as we are struggling with the cares of the world from time to time. And every now and then in my sanctified mind, I can imagine that people are looking at us and wondering, I thought they were sanctified. 
I thought they had been down in Jesus' name, but seems like they're struggling even more than I am. I can imagine in my mind where we're going through all of these challenging times, but we know that as we go through those times that there has been a promise made to us. And that promise is that if I walk right, that promise is if I talk right, that promise is if I do the work of the Lord, that after a while, my payday is coming after a while. I imagine in my mind that as we struggle with the process of the resurrection, that the Lord himself being the great God had to foretell of his own death, had to foretell and tell the prophets that there's going to come a time when I'm going to be killed, but I'm going to wake up on the third day. Uh, there's a time when the Lord had to share out with us that because God is the Holy One, and the Bible says that he never saw corruption in Psalms 16 and 10, that the Lord went through all of this as a commitment to make sure that you have an opportunity to be saved. That's why when we come into the house of the Lord and we start thinking about how good the Lord has been and we start thinking about where God has brought us from, we ought to be the very one that's jumping up and shouting and let the world know that I'm glad to be in the service one more time. We should be the very one that stand up and say, had it not been for the Lord that was on my side. When we think about all the things that the Lord went through and we think about how he suffered and died on the cross. Now listen here, there are no other religious leaders known to mankind that has ever been able, no matter what kind of God they said they were, no matter what kind of savior they said they were, there has never been another religious leader in the history of the world that has said, I'm going to live among you I'm, and then I'm going to die, but I'm gonna get up in a few days. Uh, if Buddha was here, Buddha would have to tell you, well, uh, I thought I might be able to come back, but I wasn't able to come back. If Hinduism or Hindu was here, they might tell you, well, I believe in certain things, but there has never been a Hindu that has ever died and came back to life again. Muhammad was a great leader of Islam and a great leader of the world, but Muhammad died and he did not rise again. And so the promise that God has made to us is that I'm going to die, but I'm coming back after my people. And I'm going to leave you a little something here while I'm gone that will take care of you while I am away. God told Joshua in chapter 1 and verse 9 that we ought to be strong and very courageous because the Lord has promised us that he would be with us always, even until the end. I want to share with you today that when God has made a promise that there is nothing that will deter him from his promise to you. We have to learn how to wait on the Lord. We have to learn how to put our time in and wait for God to do exactly what he said he's going to do. We should not be afraid or timid about the promises of God. He may not come when you want him, but I'm a witness, he's always right on time. And so today I'm glad to know that God made a promise to us. The Lord said, I will die, but I will rise again. The Lord said that my blood is going to be shed, but it's gonna cover a multitude of sin. 
And when the Lord said, I won't leave you alone, but I'm going to leave you a comforter. I'm going to leave you something that you'll be able to hold on to in the midnight hour. And so the Bible says that God made a promise to us. He made a promise that says, whoever come to me, I will receive them and no one will be able to, to take you away from me. The Bible says that if we keep the commandments of the Lord, that the Lord will take care of us. I hear the word saying, if we love the Lord, we got to show some signs. The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you then believe redeemed by the power of the Holy Ghost, you need to let the world know that you've already been to the water and you've already been baptized uh, and you're running for Jesus for a long time. Uh, listen, my friends, uh, I want to encourage you today uh, to hold on to the promise that God made you. Um, God is going to reward you um, for the trouble that you've been through. Um, I come to tell you today that your labor is not in vain. Uh, Keep on giving God's name the praise uh, and God will make a way uh, because the Lord uh, is going to give us power uh, to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh, the Lord will be able to give us strength uh, to stand at our weakest moment. Uh, the Lord will be able uh, to bring us out just in the nick of time. Uh, the kind of God we serve and always, always, always uh, has a ram in the bush. Uh, just when it seems like it's almost over. Just when it seems like there is no way out. Just when it seems like there is no answer. God steps in right on time. Uh, I'm a witness to tell you that the power of the Lord uh, is upon you to do a great work um, but we got to have a spirit of resurrection um, we cannot allow um, our past to destroy uh, our mindset of praising and magnifying the Lord um, listen here my friends um, I need you to understand um, that it is the devil's job um, to try to make you believe um, that you are not worthy of the praises of God um, the devil will try to get you to believe um, that things are not going to work out in your favor. Um, the devil will try to get you to believe um, that your resurrection meant nothing. Um, but I'm here to tell you um, that when God has made a promise, um, he will deliver. Um, can you put your hands together uh, and give God some praise? As I need you to understand today, uh, as I begin to close this message out, uh, that it is um, a spiritual Galilee that we're trying to find. Uh, we have to find our way uh, to praise and magnify the name of the Lord. Uh, in our text today, um, here comes Mary Magdalene uh, and Mary, the mother of James. Uh, and they decided, well, uh, they don't care the Lord. Uh, they don't kill my Savior. Uh, I can't imagine in their minds uh, they were saying, well, uh, he's gone now. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know how we're going to make it. Uh, I don't know how uh, it's going to all come together. Um, but they were mourning and they were crying and they were dealing with all kinds of problems. Uh, but here comes the Lord. Uh, they were walking along uh, and the Bible says um, that they were worried about how uh, two women were going uh, to put a big boulder away. Uh, how uh, are we going to move the 
rock um, that's in front of the sepulcher. Um, back in those days, um, amen, there was a sepulcher um, that you could literally walk into um, and the body of the deceased person um, was back in the backside, the inside of the sepulcher. Um, and when they thought they killed the Lord, um, somebody had the bright idea that they were going to put a, a bigger rock. Um, that they were going to put a bigger boulder um, in front of uh, Jesus' tomb uh, because they didn't want somebody going around uh, taking the rock away uh, and claiming uh, that Jesus had gotten up from the dead. Uh, and so they were coming to the sepulcher uh, and they were worried in their mind, uh, how uh, are we gonna move uh, this big rock? Uh, how are we gonna move uh, the rock away um, but as they approached the sepulcher uh, they looked and they were amazed uh, that the rock had already been moved uh, I come to tell you today um, we got some rocks in our lives uh, we've got some rocks that are keeping us from praising God uh, we've got some boulders in our way uh, and they're heavy um, and they're blocking you from praising God uh, but God told me to tell you uh, that in 2023 uh, your boulder uh, is going to be removed uh, the rock that's holding you down uh, is going to be removed uh, there's going to come a day uh, when you're going to wake up in the morning uh, you're going to feel lighter in your shoes uh, because the boulder uh, that's keeping you down uh, has been removed uh, the rock uh, that's holding down your blessing um, is going to be removed um, you got to keep on praying um, you got to keep on fasting huh? and so here they are huh? and then huh, there was an angel huh, waiting on him huh? Lord have mercy huh? the Lord huh, left a messenger huh? it didn't come by Amazon huh? it didn't come huh, by Federal Express huh? it did not come huh, by the US post office um, but here was an angel uh, sent there by God um, because God knew um, they were going to come looking uh, and then they were amazed um, might have been a little scared um, you know how it is uh, late at night uh, or early in the morning uh, sometime if a sound come uh, you looking around uh, trying to see where it came from uh, some of you watching the television uh, and you got surround sound uh, and the sound uh, starts coming from all directions. Um, you trying to figure out where it's coming from. Um, but there uh, was an angel uh, and said, I heard um, that y'all looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Um, oh, I wish I had a little help today. Um, I heard um, that you looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Um, he died but he rose again uh, he died uh, he's not here uh, I heard somebody say uh, that well uh, where did he go uh, and did anybody see him um, the Bible says uh, that the angel said uh, just like the Lord said in his word uh, you can find him uh, in Galilee uh, now check this out y'all uh, Galilee was a long way uh, from Jerusalem, um, the Bible said um, it took over 30 hours uh, to walk from Jerusalem. Uh to Galilee huh? they couldn't call a Uber huh? they couldn't call the taxi service huh? they couldn't call for a ride huh? they had to walk all the way huh? oh Lord huh? they had to walk all the way huh? from Jerusalem huh? to Galilee huh? but I imagine in my mind huh? they were saying huh? if I can just get to Galilee huh? I can see Jesus for myself huh? if I 
can just get to Galilee. I'll be able to see the Lord if I can just get to Galilee. My troubles will be over. If I can just get to Galilee, my troubles will be no more. I can imagine that in my sanctified mind, they begin to walk to Galilee. That's like walking from Sandusky, Ohio to Elyria, Ohio. They got to walk in to Galilee. Weary, wounded, and a little sad. But I imagine in my mind, they said they thought that they killed my Lord. They thought that he was dead in his grave. But God got all power. God got all strength. I come to tell you, meet me where I can get some joy. Meet me where I can get some deliverance. Meet me where we can shout and praise the Lord. Meet me in Galilee. When I get to Galilee, I'm going to see my Lord. When I get to Galilee, I'm going to shout the victory. When I get to Galilee, I'm going to give God all the praise. You don't know like I know what I've been through. You don't know where God brought me from. I thought he was dead, but God said, I'm, I'm alive forevermore. You're looking for me. I told you I was going to die on the cross, but I made a promise unto you and every generation that I'm gonna take care of you yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death meet me in Galilee God's gonna make it all right God's gonna deliver after a while God is gonna make a way out of no way but you gotta get to Galilee you gotta get running you gotta get to walking if you gotta crawl Crawl to Galilee. God's got victory. Victory shall be yours. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, victory will be mine. I made up my mind. I'm going all the way. You can turn back if you want to. You can go back if you want to. But when I think about the goodness, the goodness, the goodness of the Lord, I, I got to praise him. I got to lift him up. He's worthy. Oh, yeah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all praise. Meet me where we can praise him. Meet me where we can shout the victory. Look at your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, don't wait till the battle is over. Ah, Lord. Say, neighbor, don't wait till the battle is over. Shout right now. Give God the praise now. Give God the praise now. Give God the praise. Because he's worthy. He's worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. See, you don't know like I know. He said, meet me in Galilee. If you're looking for Jesus, if you're looking for Jesus, meet me in Galilee. If you're looking for joy in the midst of the storm, storm clouds are raging. But I, I know somebody in Galilee that's going to make a way out of nowhere. Weeping may endure. For a night time, 
the joy. Ah, Lord, joy. Joy, joy, joy. Joy is coming in the morning. Hallelujah to the name of God. Meet me in Galilee. Meet me where the saints are giving God's the name to praise. Hallelujah. They thought, just like Jesus, they thought that they had him, but you've had your own resurrection. I said, you have had your own resurrection. The devil thought he had you, but God made a way out of nowhere. 